welcome to TBTV Sport and to the ancient times when Noah was building an ark and SOP saves us from the rain today. I'm at the county ground for Anworthy United against Brockenhurst. One final 2021 shout out to Auckland Waste Management. That's my mate Steve who's sponsoring my Gold of the Season competition and is also a pretty good businessman so give him a shout. This is my last match of 2021, but my first one of 2022 comes from Christchurch, where they play the Badgers. That's on the 3rd of January, so I'll have the highlights up by about the 4th or the 5th. Anyway, it's back to today, and my usual plea for you to like the video at the end if you do indeed like it. Every like and every comment does help, so please contribute if you can. Moving on, here's today's lineups. And this is what the table looks like at the start of play. Brockner sitting in second, and Worthy in fourth, six points behind, but with two games in hand. And after this cheeky little look at the camera from Pat McManus, we will introduce you to today's officials. Referee Tony Smith, he's the one who needs a slightly short offence, and his assistants Adrian Wiltshire and Bart Bloomfield. And what the hell is he doing? I've witnessed some stunts to get on TV TV before, but this one takes the biscuit. The stands look pretty sparse at the moment, that's because everyone's packed in the clubhouse, but mark my word, they will be absolutely packed out in about 15 minutes when the heavens open. And as everyone wishes everyone else a very happy Christmas, I'll say for the last time this year, these highlights are brought to you by TV TV. Just as the rain started a fall about five minutes in, perfect timing, eh? Harvey Wright launches a ball into the box. <laughs> Max Wilcock jumps for the ball and blocks Mayo's vision. There's no foul going on here in my opinion and Eddie Hodge benefits from the loose ball. Brockenhurst went down the other end and tried to get level. Silvano Obeng running onto the ball and twisted and turning like a slippery little eel before getting his shot away. <laughs> Following the early goal, I was optimistic we were going to see a real attacking show from both teams. What we got instead was more of a war of attrition. It's safe to say that the ref was called into action more than the goalkeepers. By now, I deployed my rain cover on the camera, so you'll hear lots of little annoying dibs and dabs. Sorry, not sorry. As you may have gathered, this wasn't a game full of plentiful opportunities, but every now and then, a bit of good football did break out. I think that save from Wilcock deserves another airing. We are now 30 minutes in, believe it or not, and there's a penalty. My behind the goal lens was absolutely splattered with rain, so I can't show you anything from there. But from what we can see, it looks like Murphy brings Haynes down and there's certainly no complaints from the keeper. Yeah! Murphy makes amends by saving No Beng's spot kick and smothering the rebound. There's far too much football being played. Can we get back to the fouls please? There's one, and you've only got to wait 10 seconds for the next. Ah! 
Yes, that's right. In this game, fouls were like buses. From this free kick, Obeng has another pop. And Connor Cochlin blows a gasket. The weather had turned thoroughly miserable. It wasn't festive, it was just wet and horrible. The referee blows up for half time, we go in 1 0, and I can empty some water out of my camera. The second half started with a bit of excitement. Eddie Hodge getting on the end of an eyeball, but misjudging his direction. Just a few minutes later, and the Amers think that they've doubled their lead. However, the referee blows for offside, although it does look incredibly close. I told you the stands would be packed, didn't I? Look at them all, really enjoying themselves. The Amers were having a decent period of play and had a penalty shout. I worked my magic on the replay and for me, I think the rest got it right. Continuing the bus theme, don't worry, I'm not going to use the sound effect this time. There was another penalty shout just a few minutes later. Smith might get the faintest of touches on the ball here, but who'd be a ref, eh? Cold legs are the consequence of standing on your head in your warm-up. Not recommended. Here's the Hammers bench, thoroughly enjoying their day out at the football. Just look at these conditions. I mean, I was standing pitch side with my camera and I was wetter than a fish. As we approached the 90th minute mark, the Badgers started to come on strong and so did their support. Come on, you Badgers! Alas, as we all know, it's difficult to hear anything when you're underwater. Brooks' last opportunity of the match came from this corner, but the ball ricochets around, and thanks to some staunch defending from the Hammers, a shooting opportunity is never really on offer. Following a protracted period of keeping the ball in the corner, the referee's seen enough and he blows up for full time. It finishes Hamworth United 1, Brockenhurst 0. <laughs> On the balance of play, I personally think a draw would have been a fair result, but you've got to give credit to the Amers for keeping the Badgers at bay. As I said earlier, this match was a real battle of attrition and goes to show why the teams are so close together in the league table. So next up from me is Christchurch against Brockenhurst in the Wessex League Premier on the 3rd of Jan. Highlights up a couple of days after. In the meantime, I wish you all a very happy new year and I'll see you then. Yeah.